Hi, Nana here. And then in this session, uh, we are going to see an yeah, internal requisition transfer order. Now, let me go on and share my screen. <clears throat> so if you go there, we'll now have a look at it. <clears throat> uh, first of all, we should know about how to transfer material between two oxes. There are five many ways by which we can transfer the material. I will now go to the fusion SEM basics. I will now go to the SEM documentation. I will now go to the fusion inventory documentation. And then there, I will now see one IoT in transit. Right. This is the file. So on the fusion SEM basics, we have SEM documentation, fusion inventory documentation, and then IoT in transit is the one. Fine. Double click on it and then open it up. So now, if you see, there are five many ways we can transfer it. Let us say this is going to be one org and then the second org. And then let us say this is the second Rabat and then this is Hyderabad. So the transfer time is very less. So within 15 minutes, we can very well transfer. And then the cost of transfers also, the lorry driver is asking only 500 rupees. So the cost of transfers is negligible for this org. And then the time taken is also negligible. Even in such cases, we will be configuring the transfers as direct organization transfer. So in a direct organization transfers, the cost and time are negligible. So the moment you perform the transfers, the stock will be immediately be reflecting on the destination org. But physically, it will now reach only after 15 minutes time. So, but the client says it's okay, mommy. I don't need uh, I, 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 the 15 minutes delay is okay for me, even though it is not appearing here, but they can really use the stock only after 15 minutes. They say it's okay. So in such cases, you will be configuring the interlock parameters as what direct. Let us say this is going to be Bombay and then this is going to be Madras. And then there is going to be a significant amount of time as well as we will be having a lot of cost involved, like the loading cost, the unloading cost, and then the transit expenses. So in such cases, we will be configuring the network between two orgs as what? In transit, actually. In the in transit, we will not ship it from the org, and then afterwards, we will not receive the gear of the destination org, and then finally, we will not make a put away. So this many activities we will not do. So in a in transit, this is the second method of transfer, actually. <clears throat> second method, you can make it as the in transit. The third method, fine. When you're doing it in this method, when you're doing it in the in transit method, we only have to pick up the material from this place and then put it on the vehicle, actually. And then we don't know which is going to expire first. There are so much of items there. And then you're doing it. You won't be knowing which one is going to expire first, actually. So second method where allocation is not possible at all. We cannot allocate it. We only have to manually uh, load the vehicle. So the third method is a transfer order. So the transfer order has got three distinct advantages, actually. So it is also like uh, uh, your IoT in transit only. Intro transfers in transit. But uh, transfer order has got three distinct advantages where whatever is now going to expire first, we can very well pick. The system will not tell you which lot is going to expire first. Fine. So we can very well use the facility of picking rule. The picking rule can be allocate, can be used for allocation of lot, serial, uh, and then sub-inventory and locators. Fine. So based upon your uh, capability, we can very well do it, and then it will now allocate the material. So material allocation is the, one of the fantastic features of a transfer order. That is the first one. The second feature of a transfer order is what? We can very well pr print the pick release document, ship confirmation documents, and then your uh, bill of lading document, vehicle load sheet, and then so many other documents, uh, commercial performance invoices, everything. So many things can be printed and then handed over to the driver. So he'll be having a very excellent document when he's traveling between two distinct places where oh, they're all in different excise zones, actually. Even the excise invoice can also be printed, actually. So it is the second distinct advantage of a transfer order. The third advantage of a transfer order is what we can automate it, actually. So the, in, the inventory's min-max can automatically create a transfer order. The sales order can also automatically create a transfer order. Right? Whereas on an IoT in transit, it is always manual. Actually. IoT in transit cannot be automated. It is always a manual transfer. Actually. Whereas transfer order has got three distinct advantages. One is allocation, one is printing of documents, and then the third is automation. Mm -hmm. So this is the third way of doing it, actually. Mm -hmm. Now, the fourth way. Again, when you want to move material between two orgs, some companies say that what happens, it involves money, actually. And then there must be some reasoning behind moving it, actually. So they would like to have an approval. Right? So when you want to have the transfer order with the approval, that is the fourth way. So in that case, what happens, we have to create an internal requisition, get it approved by the competent authority, and then afterwards, it will now get converted into a transfer order. The rest of the process are the same. Right? So the IRTO is also a transfer order, but the first part is approval, actually. There are certain companies which insist upon approval before you move it, actually. So that's the fourth way of transfer. Actually. The fifth way of transfers is what? You are moving material between two BUs, no? across BUs or across LEs. In which case, we have to set up the 
intercompany payables and then intercompany receivables as well as the supply chain financial orchestration. So that way, whatever we can move it across BUs and across LAs. This is the fifth way of transfer of material between two arcs. So any doubts on this now? Fine. So there are five ways. Now we are going to see the fourth way here. The fourth way we are going to see now. <clears throat> that is whatever, internal requisitions transfer orders where we need to have an approval. No doubts. That's clear, sir. Okay, fine, good. Fine. This is now clear, huh? fine, good. So, <laughs> now we'll now go on and see the existing item which I'm going to have. Now, fine. I will now go on and have a look at the existing item. Go there. So I will now click on it. I will now have a look at the existing item. <clears throat> so go there, click on this one. <clears throat> Click on it, and then I will go to the inventory overview. I will now have a look at the existing item. Fine. I already created that item. When yesterday itself, I did it, but I made a mistake because of which order was not coming properly. I will, go there, on it. I will now go to item quantities, and then change the art to what? T01. I will go there. Click on change art, and then I will now change it to what? T031. That is the org which I was working upon. I will go there, click on it. I will now have a look at the item quantity. <clears throat> I will have a look at the item quantity. So click on it and then go there. So click on the manage item quantities and then have a look at it. So the item is the T0306 to the one. Fine, go ahead. This is the item which we are now. We are now used it for transfer order allocation as well as done. The same item I'm going to use it. Fine, click on search and then have a look at the stock and expand it. So we have got 75 quantities. Fine, go ahead. And then expand it. <clears throat> you know, see, on this FGS sub inventory, we have 75 quantities. Everything is there. And then we will now expand it and then see this now. Fine, it has got how many lots. So it has got a lot 105. Fine, go there. And then click on it. Click on the lot details. Lot 105. Huh? Okay. <clears throat> so it is expiring on 31st of July, actually. It is expiring on 31st of July. So lot 101 is expiring on 31st of July. So I will now create one more lot which is going to expire before this, but the lot number is later, actually. Fine, go there. I will now right click and then duplicate. I will now right click and then duplicate. And then here, uh, we will now have this. <clears throat> And then here we will now make a miscellaneous transaction. Fine, click on it. I'll now go to the inventory overview. Let us now make a miscellaneous result actually. Fine, click on it. Uh, <clears throat> so create a miscellaneous transaction on this uh, T30031. Fine, click on it. I will now go there, drop it down. I will now choose this. I am not uh, concentrating on the accounting part, only the transfer part I am doing. Fine, click on it. I will now go there. Fine, click on it. I will not click on search now, fine. So this is the offset account actually. So this will be given by the financial team. I'm not choosing one account actually here in this place. Fine, click on it. So the inventory valuation to offset will be hit actually. And then go there, drop it down. I'll not make it as yes. I'm not giving any cost for this. Fine, click on cost. So go there. I will not say T0306 is the one. Then give a tab now. Uh, somebody else will join? Uh, see, uh, okay. Yes, also join. But it's also there. Yes. So go there. Click on it. Sub inventory. I will not. What happens? I keep it on the same FGS now. I will not go for ten quantities. I will not click on the edit details. So we already have a lot of one not one expiring on thirty first of January. So now whether you go there, I will not put what lot one not two. Fine, but and I will not say it is expiring before though. Fine. So lot one or two is already there actually. We already had a lot one or two. So it is expiring on twenty ninth. Already held out. I will not put transaction quantity. <laughs> So now we have two transactions basically. Fine. Lot 102 of 10 quantities expiring on 29. Lot 101 expiring later actually. So click on OK. And then confirm. Fine. Click on submit. So we have now created the transaction. We'll now go back here. And then we will have a look at it again. Fine. Expand it and then make a search. Now fine. Click on search. So 75 plus 10, 85 will be the stock actually. So lot 102 is there. So 101, if you go to the lot details, it is expiring on what? 30% of July. And then lot 102, fine. Go there. It is expiring on 21. So now I'm going to create a picking rule. Fine, go there, click on it. Right click and then duplicate. And then I will now have a look at the picking rule. So the power of allocation can be sensed in a transfer order actually. Fine, go to the values. I will now go to the setup and manage, set up and maintenance. And then and click on it. And click on search now, fine. manage picking rules. Manage percentage. Pick percentage, rule percentage. So go there, go to the place. I already created the picking rule now. Fine. The T01 pick one. Fine. Go there. Click on edit. 
So we have got multiple options on this now. Fine. If I, what, you can do it as what first expiry, first out, or first in, first out, and then uh, on a sub inventory ascending or a lot located ascending. There are so many priorities of that by which whatever you can sort out. It's a very powerful feature actually. So whichever is going to expire first will be allocated. Fine, that's not, no, you can cancel now. And then this picking rule, if you go there, go to the manage assignments. Now, fine, keep your cursor on the picking rule and then click on the manage assignments. You can now see there has been assigned to this. Normally, you won't assign it to your item actually. Fine, item assignment is very, very tough because we will have 100,000 items. That means what that many uh, sequences we had to create. We normally assign on a destination sub or or some other thing. Fine, some other thing which is common for everybody. But you must have at least one criteria for the picking rule to work actually. If assignment criteria are not there, this picking rule will not be applied. And if it is not applied, the system will now take a default picking rule of absolute last in first. Absolute last in first means what? whatever has come into the sub inventory latest, that will be allocated first. Actually. That is the medical management concept. So if there is no criteria on a particular picking rule on the assignments, that, that will not be applied at all. So I don't go and find this item has been put. So it is only for purposes, but this is very difficult in the field. Actually, You cannot do on an item basis. If you are going item basis, there will be thousands of entries, sequences we had entered. So you choose some other criteria. And then see to you that it is a common. So in this case, what happens uh, if I go and then create a transfer order for 15 quantities, the lot 102, which is expiring on 29th, fine, that will be allocated first. Fine. The lot, the item quantities, what happens? The lot 102, which is expiring on 29th, fine. You know, expiring on 29th, that will be allocated first. And then the 10 will be allocated. And then afterwards, 1021 will be chosen. And then for the five quantities, actually. Fine. This way it will not work. <laughs> fine. So this way it will not work. So uh, I'm not getting. So I'm now using the power of picking now, fine, in the transfer order actually. Any any doubts on this now? Not us. It's already been configured actually. Right? We have it. So we are now seeing the picking rules. We have seen the stocks now, fine. Whether the next one is what when you are going to create what happens an internal requisition, fine. You must have the other thing now. Fine, you want it. You will not go there. I will not right click on that. Will not done. <coughs> not go there. You want it done. <coughs> we have to have the global order promising installed actually the license you would have if you have the gop license then only what happens you cannot create an internal requisition actually if you go there go to the tools now fine go to the tools <clears throat> go to the tools and then here i have now go to the security console and then have a look at it now the gop license must be available go to the users now fine click on the users and then go there i have now say scm 10 now fine and then scm 10 and then click on this scm 10 <clears throat> come on there. so here once when you install the gop you will be able to add a role called what uh, global order promising administrator. This role itself will be visible only when you have a license actually. Otherwise, it will not be coming. The, the role itself will not come if you don't have a license actually. So you have to have a GOP license. Fine. So this is a and then afterwards, what happens? We need one more thing called supply chain operations manager. This will be available fine, normally. This is not required in any license, but it is required. So these two roles are uh, really required for IRTO combination actually. IRTO combination is required. Supply chain operations manager as well as the global order promising administrator. Mm -hmm. The global order promising administrator is required. And then uh, this one is required. <clears throat> so you are doing it. So then I click on done and then come all of it. So we are already done it now. Fine. Now what happens? We have to configure the GOP also. Fine, click on it. I will not go there. Fine, click on it. Move now. <clears throat> I will not go to the GOP area. We have to configure it. I already configured everything. So I'm only showing you what I have done. Fine, go. I will not go to the order management. I will not go to the order management. Go to the order management. Order management. And then here, what happens? I will not go to the GOP area. So there are three setups which are required on the GOP area. So the first setup is what? ATP rules, actually. I mean, click on it. Go there. I will not go to the manage ATP rules. So click on it. Manage ATP rules is the one. So I have already created one on IRTO. IRTO. Given a reasonable name. Now, naming must be very correct. Now, I have already created, actually. So click on search now. <clears throat> Maybe it is a T03. I'm not very sure about it. T03 IRTO or what? <clears throat> yeah, it is a T03 IRTO rule. Fine, click on edit. So click on it. T03 IRTO rule. I have created nothing of that. So on the ATP criteria, you enable everything on the left hand side and then enable all supplies and all demands. Mm -hmm. So this will be used by this one now. Fine. Uh, on the right hand side, if you go on and see, fine. On the right hand side, if you go on and see, <clears throat> you will now find that. This many things are coming now. Fine. Everything you make it as user defined 50, 50, 50, it will work. Whereas when you go into the planning, they will not teach you a lot about it. Fine. But if planning is not installed, make it as user defined, user defined, and then 50, 50, 50, 50 everywhere, that will work smoothly actually. 
if planning is not there. You might have a demand planning, a supply planning, or a sales and operations planning, or a demand supply planning. There are six modules that are there in planning. So those modules will now teach you about how to set up the infinite availability as well as the past due supply, everything is like that. Set it up for other things, fine. And then enable all the four here, and then enable all supplies and all demands, fine. And then go there. And then go to the ATP rule assignments, and then here, uh, you have to first of all collect it actually. If you don't collect it, you will not be able to make item org level at all. Fine. Before which, what happens? You go there, right click, and then duplicate. I will not go there and then show it to you. What do you have to do? You have to enable your org for collections actually. Fine. I will not go to the supply chain planning, supply chain planning, and then I go to the plan inputs. I go to the supply chain planning, plan inputs. Before you go and then create the ATP rule, what you have to do is you go there, and then you will not go to the what? Manage planning source systems. You go to the manage planning source systems, and then go there. Here, you will not choose what OPS now, right? In the OPS, well, I'm going to go there. And then you go to the manage organization list. In the OPS, you click on the manage organization list, and then click on the refresh organization list. It will all get refreshed. And then query your all. The T01, T03, and then make a query. So what I have done is I have even enabled master also for collection, but that is not required actually. Right? Only the childs need to be collected actually. So we have to enable your organizations for collections actually. And remember, the whole process is coming under planning actually. They're all coming and planning. So we have to enable the org for collections and then give a save and close. It's already enabled, right? Only the child orgs has to be enabled. You can cancel. Both the child orgs has to be enabled. And then after this, what happens? You have to go there, frankly, on it. You have to collect it now. Fine. Go to the correct planning data. So after having done the planning source systems, what happens? You click on the plan collected data, correct planning data. In this one, what happens? You go there, fine. Go there, click on it. And then you go to the targeted one. <clears throat> you go to the targeted one. And then when you're doing it for the first time, bring all the reference entities to the selected one. Fine. Click on it. Bring everything. And then you go to the supply planning data and then bring everything and then submit it. It will not take more than half an hour. If your uh, installation is going to have more than 150,000 items, it will even take two hours also. Right? So in such cases, what happens? Uh, if you have already collected everything, what you do is uh, now bring everything back here. No? You collect only specific things now. Right? We are now going to collect our organizations now and then we are going to collect items. Specific collections is okay. Right? These two things you collect on a targeted basis. And then afterwards, what happens? You go to the supply plan data and then collect the on and on and you collect it. Right? So these are only two things which you have to collect. Right? Once when you're done, one sector. Otherwise, what happens? You collect. I've already done uh, what happens, the full collection, and so I'm not going to do the collection actually. So click on a close. So after having done the collection, then only what happens your org will appear here. So once when you've done it, what happens? It'll be appearing here. And then I will put the item also. And then and the item org level, you have to do it now. I mean, item org level is the best level actually. <clears throat> and then do it. And then what happens for every org, you have to have an entry. So in the ATP rule assignments, what happens is you have to entry for both the orgs. Both the source. Source is now 031 and then destination is 032. So we had to have what happens entry. Form. So this is the first setup on GOB. Is it clear? Any doubts on this now? <coughs> Good. So no doubts. No, sir. You can answer. The first setup. Then afterwards, what happens? You have to create a sourcing rule now. Thank you. Right. No, go there. So go to the manage. So this is the second setup. Go to the manage sourcing rules. I don't go there. I will not query on the T03 now. Find T03. Find click on search. No. <clears throat> oh, I have not made it as a T03. Man, there are some mistakes actually. Man. You should always put it appropriately now. Uh, organization level. Man. I will not try to make a search. No. Mm -hmm. uh, 031. No. So it is on the 032 actually. Fine. That is why if you don't name it properly, it will be very difficult actually. I will not try to search on what percentage uh, right? uh, internal requisition percentage and then make a search and then click on search. You know, see it's coming and okay, this is the one. I made an IRTO now. So click on it. So the next one you have to go to find out that. So name the rule properly so that whatever you'll be able to easily identify also. I know made a wrong naming actually. And then this is a local rule for the destination R. This is for the destination R. Now I'm going to do what I must move the material from 31 to 32. This is the destination or in the bottom. I will now make a transfer from the source or and then it is 100 percent and then rank is one. Fine. 100 percent rank is one. So this is how we you have to create a sourcing rule actually. And then click on the rules, effective date, fine. Effective is the yesterday itself. So the second setup on the GOP is complete. Any doubts on this now? Make it is clear, huh? Uh, yes, sir. Give a cancel. Next is what you go there. I will not do the assignments. Fine, go to the assignments. Before doing the assignments, what happens? You go there, and then we will not run. Uh, we will not find out the assignment set used by the system. Go to the setup and maintenance. And then you click on it. And then click on search. No, fine. I will not go to the manage admin profiles. Fine, manage profile. 
admin percentage mean profile percentage so manage admin profile is the one fine goes actually on it here i will no query for the msp default actually msp percentage mean default percentage i'm entering so msp default i'm going to query it it is not showing you one of the fine goes so here it is not showing you what if you go on and see it is not showing you global order form is it so in this we have to have an entry now fine in this one we are entering so this profile points to one of the assignment set on that profile on that assignment set only we have to do everything fine is a vision one so we are working on the vision actually now click on that and then here what am i going to go there so the second setup is now complete now fine click on it and then we'll now go for the third setup if i click on cancel now <clears throat> and then we'll now go for the third setup and click on it now go to the third setup is what <laughs> you go to manage assignment sets so first i made the atp role next is what manage sourcing roles and then now i go to the assignment sets go to the manage assignments then third setup on the job so go there i will now query for the global global i will now query right? is a global order promising is a one fine click on it here i have made an entry actually already made an entry so in the query mode what happens i will now put the organization what t032 there is the destination or you got it uh, we have made an item organization assignment now of this destination or and then the item is what this item and then description and then the sourcing rule and then i put the sourcing rule this sourcing rule is going to transfer the material from the source org of 3031 to 302 and then it will be destined to this location actually so the assignment set is also complete so all the three setups of gop is complete for which you must, must have a gop license actually you got it now any doubts <clears throat> give a cancel and give a cancel <clears throat> now if you go on then have a look at now if i click on the manage users now if i click on the server maintenance <coughs> we are going to have a look at the manage users now click on it so the gop is now done afterwards what you have to do is you have to again make a collection one more collection you have to make now if i click on it we have to make a collection so we go that i will now make a collection actually click on it i will now go to the planning systems now go to the supply chain planning and then go to the plan inputs and then the second collection or the third collection you have to do first collection of food collection then next is what item org and on and then after the third collection you do after the gop setup so go to the place fine go that one i don't wait yes no and then here again a targeted so here this is known as what order orchestration reference object so all the gop activities are coming up you have to collect it this is the only thing you have to collect in the reference data that thing is there actually in the supply planning data that thing is there so only in the reference data you collect this no fine order orchestration reference this is the third collection you have to do first is the full collection next is the item org and on and the third one is the order orchestration reference object fine collect it Right. Then it will be coming on the planning area. The must. Good. Fine. No. Now what happens when you are working on it? No. Fine. When you are working on the demand is going to be created. Internal record is the demand. No. Fine. No. So I will now go and show you the demand. No. Open up. No. Fine. Open up fourth one and then open up the third one. Fine. So now we are working on vision. SCM ten is now working on the vision and so we will now see what is the default BU for this. We are going to have a look at what is the default BU for this. So go there. Click on it. I will now. What happens? Go there. Click on it. I will not go to setup and maintenance, and then I will not see what is the default BU for this ACM10 user actually. Click on it. So click on search. I will not say manage right uh, users. I will not go to the manage users and then see what is the default user for the default BU for this user. Right? Go to the manage users, and then I will not query what the ACM10 actually. ACM10. If you query it, what happens? It will be coming. We will now have a look at what is the default view. And this is the one student comma SCM10 is the one fine. Is the last name comma first name? Fine, click on it. We'll now go there, click on it, and have a look at it. So go there. Here, what about the default view is this? So by default, he is going to do it now. Fine. If he is going to create a demand on this one, there is no data access required at all. No data. Access. But if you want to do for any other line of business, I go there. This is one line of business. And then if you want to do for any other line of business, I already have created a line of business on T03, and then we had to have a data access. Fine. So, if you want to create a demand for any other line of businesses, then data access is a must actually for him. For this one, no data access is required. So now, what happens? You go there. You will not have a look at the data access. Fine, you cancel. Go there. Done. And then come out of it. And then go to the manage data access. Manage data access. So we go to the manage data access. Fine for users. Now, fine, click on it. You will not query for the SCM10. Users with the data access. Fine, go there. Is what SCM10. And then. What happens? Oh, what is the role? It is the advanced procurement requester. Fine. Advanced procurement requester is the role. Fine. Advanced procurement requester. So both that, and then we will now see how many data access we have. Fine. Click on search. Fine. For the US one business unit, it is not required. Fine. But you know, they, we are given by this side. Fine. We are now added what T03 as well as UK business unit also. That means what he can create a demand for any of the three line of businesses basically. Clear on this now. Fine. 
So when you give it, what happens? He can have it. Otherwise, he will be able to create only on the default BU, which is mentioned on the uh, manage users. So now we can very well create. So this will not come in the list of values actually. Right? You know, give us this one. Right? Now we'll now go there and then we will now see the requisition creation actually. Right? Click on the home page, click on the home icon, and then you go to the procurement. Now we are in 24C actually. If you go there and then see, fine, click on it. And then go to the what happens, go there, go there and see. You know, fine, about this application, if you go on and see, <clears throat> fine, go there. If you go to the about the application, fine, go there. So go there. Ah, oh, God. Click on it. You now go to the about the application. You can now see it's not, we are in 24C actually. So till 24B, what they have done is uh, they have kept the responsive self-service procurement also over here. RSSP is also there. But in 24C, they removed it actually. If you go to this place, fine. So that will be coming in 25A actually. Fine. It is not visible in this place. I don't know whether in the vision they removed or I don't know. I'm not exactly remembering it now. But in this place, I'm not able to see it at all. In the board procurement, what happens? You can now see purchase requisitions new will be coming here in this place. The purchase requisition new will be coming. And the old one has been put on the show more actually. Fine. Here you see purchase agreement new is coming. Similarly, what happens? The purchase requisition new also has to come. Fine. It is not coming at all in the list. And the purchase requisition new is coming. So if you go there, you will now have a shop that is the old one. Now. Fine, click on the shop. It is the older one. There is the present one actually. Fine, click on the shop as the present. So we have to first of all set up your uh, what's called the preferences. Now. Fine, click on it. You go to the more task and then update the requisition preferences basically. So initially, what happens? It was coming only as a US business unit, and then the remaining two are also possible. So I changed it to T03, and then I want the destination to have the material. Fine. Deliver to location of the destination, you put it, and then the sub of the destination will be gone. And since the location NORG already type, so it will not show you appropriate destinations. Fine. T0 through to the uh, sub is only it will not show. I'm not putting anything. So let us say we are not desired. What happens? It has to be what happens? Put on the SFSI, find something on the destination. We can override it during the transfer period. And all this. Go there and then click on save and close. So the preferences has to be set properly for the deliver to organizations and destination. And click on seven and close. So your charge account. Charge account is a is a, is a mandate is not a mandatory one. It is again what happens. It will be taught in the pro procurement training actually. Okay. So okay. That is mainly for expense destinations where what happens. We can even have a user defined charge account. Right? For okay. an inventory destination, we cannot define any charge account at all. It is automatic basis. If the destination okay. is going to be inventory, then go there. If it's going to be there, if the destination is going to be inventory, then what happens? This favorite charge accounts will not work at all. Only for expense destination, it will work. That has okay. been explained in my procurement training. Okay, sir. Okay, so click on cancel. Now, what happens? I'm now going to create a requisition for 15 corners. So, once when you do all these things, then what happens? I have to set up the approvals also. Fine, click on it. I will not go on that set up the approvals. Fine. Because it needs an approval actually. Fine, click on search and then I will not say manage requisition approvals. I have already set up everything and so I'm only showing it to you. Fine. Otherwise, I can even demonstrate you. Fine, click on manage requisition approvals. So here I have now enabled on the header hierarchy three. This rule has been enabled. I will now click on the edit rules and then show it to you. So go there. Rule always applies and then go there. So this is the one. I have not made this one. I made this one. Not this one. This one I made. So I made two conditions. One is what the requisitioning BU is a T03. And then the next one is what internal transfer requisition is yes. No, I click on it. No, it doesn't show it. This condition I will not show it. So internal transfer, the attribute is what internal transfer requisitions is equal to yes. Actually. So I am not going to create an internal requisition. So what happens if this is yes, then only it will be applied. And then it will not send it to SCM 11 actually for approval. So there are two conditions there. So only when there is a, we are creating IR and not a normal PR. Normal PR, this rule will not apply. Only for IR, this rule will apply. Actually. Any doubts? For IR, it will apply. And then it will not take you to SCM level. Venkat, are you there? Or you might have gone for sleep. <laughs> okay, it's very late for you. Mm -hmm. Sir, now if it is a PR, it will go for other rule. I am right. Yeah, other rule. This rule will not be applied. If a PR, this rule will not be applied. So since it is IR, this rule will be applied. Okay. okay. Only for IR, this rule will apply. For a PR, it will not apply at all. I have already made it finger cancel. And then you have to deploy it also. Deploy it. So the approvals have been set, and then all other things are set up fully. And then we have done the collection also, twice the collection. Now, if you go there, click on it, we will now make an internal requisition for 15 quantities. I will not go there. I will not go to the procurement, and then I will not go to the shop, and then I will not create the requisition. So go to the place. I will not click on enter requisition lines. Mm -hmm. So this is for the destination all. Fine, go there. I will not put fine, T0306. 
and then go there fine click on it and then you can now see automatically it will not become and one more thing is what item attribute has to be very appropriate now that also i will not show you item attributes also must be appropriate now fine click on it so once when you do it what happens it will not show you the inventory as a source <clears throat> Inventory is a source, and then they're not saying from T03 child one it has come. And if you make it as a supplier, then what happens? The source organization will not be available. So since it is an inventory, it is an internal requisition. It shows you the source. It will not show you the source only when you have what this one now. When you go there, it will not show this one. Well, I click on a shop requisition, and then I will not go there over you. So here I will not show you what the item attributes on. So I click on it. I will not go to the product information management, and then I will not query the item attribute. When you're creating an item, it must be appropriate actually. Product wow. information management. <clears throat> so click on it and then now go to the browse items and then query the item. And browse items, let me go. Because I have already set up everything. And so nothing to set up for your fine. Is that P0306? No fine. Click on sir. Uh, sir, you no, mean, assigned to both the child. Yeah, tell me. Sales and uh, order management uh, uh, in the task attributes internal order, transfer yeah, order is I'm, enabled. I'm coming. I'm coming. I am in the master, no fine. I am in the master T030. I go to the specifications, no fine. Go to the specifications. First of all, what happens in the manufacturing area, you must have the inventory asset value as this. Then it is the asset item actually. And then after all, you put the sales and order management here. What happens? You must ensure that internally transfer order is as well as a transfer order enabled is this. So these two attributes are responsible for what happens putting the source here. When you make it the rock part of inventory, then the source organization is coming because this item is enabled for internal transfers actually. Okay. Oh, fine. The item is enabled for internal transfers. And what else? These two are the attributes. And then I go to the purchasing and then I'll go there and then I'll not give a list price. Now, this price is not $10. So I'll go there, click on the shop purchase requisitions. Now, what happens? I will now go for a quantity of 10 actually. 10 is the quantity I'm going to make it. So now, not 10, 15, I will not make it. So once when you go for a 15 quantities, now 10 quantities will be allocated from lot two, which is expiring on 29. And then the remaining five quantities will be allocated from lot one, lot one, which is expiring on 30%. Because it is first expiry, first stock. The one I okay. give. Not coming. So now quantity is coming. The amount is coming as zero. Even though we have given $10 as the price on the inventory item, fine. For internal transfers, whatever the amount is always zero. Actually. It will not be having any amount at all. Internal transfers will be having amount zero. So the account is also coming because account setups are all taught in other training. I'm not telling anything at all. So click on add to cart. So that what happens, you'll be getting a purchase requisition. I click on add to cart. So what happens, you are going to add to the cart now. 10 quantities, 15 quantities actually. 15 quantities. The source is also coming. So it's going to move from uh, Z0, T031 to T032 actually. Because on the preferences, we are given uh, T032. That was a mistake yesterday. I made it actually. Delivered location, I was not properly done. So I did not come. So go there, click on it. I will now click on the manage approvals and see who is going to approve. I click on it, click on review, and then see. So EMP SCM 11 has to approve it. Now, click on it, and then click on the manage approvals. We'll now see who is going to approve this. So here, if you want to have an approval and then perform a transfer, you have to go for IRTO route actually, for which a GOP license is also required. Actually. Some companies will insist for because some uh, because it involves transfer cost actually. So in some places, what about the transfer cost will be significant actually. When you're moving it from immediately, it will be significant. And so what I was, we need to have an approval. And then it may even take a longer time. So four days on the road actually. So whether somebody has to approve this four days of delay for moving it, because this is a normal unit. And then here we are now making a spray painting. So we'll now go bring it over here, do the spray painting and then bring it back. So if the time is very much, they will now put the spray painting unit in this org itself and then avoid the transfers. Business. So there are so many decisions which will be making it. So some companies will now insist upon the approval for which what happens you are doing. You can now see SCM 11 is approval. Fine, click on submit by which what happens. The 13th requisition is now getting up. Requisition number that is now getting submitted for approval. It will be submitted for approval. Now we will now log in as what? Uh, as SCM 11 actually. I have already set up the passwords also. Fine, go there. So I will now go there. Take up this now. Fine, click on it. I will now have a look at it. So it is now pending approval. Fine, it is now pending approval. So I will now go there. Fine, click on home now. So, the home now. So take away. I will now put on a, some other browser now. Fine. So I am in a Chrome browser. So let me go to some other browser. Fine, click on it. I will now go to another browser now. So here I will now paste it and then log in as a CM11 actually. We are now going to log in as a CM11 now. I go, I'm going very fast, but uh, you are able to understand now, Venkat. Is it clear now? Yes, sir. Venkat, oh God, Venkat is not there. He <laughs> slipped, I think. <laughs> it's very late for him actually. Okay. Anyway. So click on sign in now, fine. I'm now signing in. <clears throat> SCM11.student.
for the click on it. And then here you can now click on the what happens? The bell icon, and then you can now see the notification. Okay. So action required for approval. Fine, go the click on it. You're not going to approve it. Okay. Let us now take an action for approval. So if this guy is approving for movement of material from Bombay to Madras, actually. Fine, click on approve. So once when it is approved, the IR will be converted into a, what is called a transfer order. Transfer order. Test. Fine, click on something now. So IR will be getting converted into a transfer order. Actually. It will not happen. It will not take some time actually. So we'll not go there and then have a look at it. So we'll go there. Here. So go there. I will not click on the 13th and then have a look at it whether it is not approved or not. No, it is approved actually. So it is not approved. So the IR is approved by the appropriate authority. You can even go for six methods of approval. One is a single worker. One is a what's called approval group. And then a, one is a what's called job level approval. One is a supervisor approval. One is a position level approvals. And there are, so there are six methods of approval there. So depending upon the need, what happens is we have to configure the approvals according. It all depends upon how the management wants it. So the third need is approved. Now what happens is you can go there and then have a look at it. Now if I click on the third is approved. Now you will now go there and then have a look at the transfer order which is being created. Now if I click on it. This is for 15 quantities actually. I will now go to the inventory overview. I will now click on it. I will now go to the manage transfer orders. Manage transfer orders. I'm not going to go to the manage transfer orders. So I may be in any org, it doesn't matter. I will now say the source is what? T031. That is the org I'm going to put in. Out of the three mandatory fields, it is required. I click on search. So for 15 quantities, what happens? The grade list transfer order. You see. So go there. So here, what happens? It is now showing you 15 quantities has come over here. The first quantity, and I can see. So this is the transfer order number. 153046. When I make a query, what happens? You get it. So, so go there. So click on the view shipments and receipts. What happens? Nothing has been shipped, actually. Nothing has been shipped. So let us now go there and then do the pick release and pick confirmation. Pick release will now split it into two lines, for, one for 10 lines and one for 15 lines. Fine. Right click and then duplicate. We are going to perform a pick release for this one. So in the transfer order number 153, find the transfer order number 153056 is the one. So let us now perform a pick release now. Fine. Click on it. So go to the inventory now, find inventory overview. And then you go to the shipment lines. You go to the shipment lines. So you must be on the source org, remember. Fine. You go to the shipments. I go to the shipments and then go to the manage shipment lines. I'm already in the source only, fine, T031 only. Go there. So, yeah, one five three. I will not go to the transfer. <laughs> 153046. <laughs> go there. 153046 is the one. And then make it as before. <clears throat> and then query. So, click on search. So, now the power of allocation will come into picture because the transfer order has got allocation power. So, we are not searching for it. And then 153046 will be ready for allocation, actually, pick release. Fine. Go to actions and then go to launch pick release. So by picking it, what happens? The line will get split into two lines. One for 10 and then one for five contacts. So click on it. I will not give a save and close. The pick release is launched, actually. Now, the particular detail will be getting progress to what? It will go to what? Staged, actually. Fine. Expand it and then see. We will have two lines of point. Fine. Click on search. We will have two lines. So give a save. Uh, what happens? They give a save and close and then come out of it under the main line. Okay? So we got two lines now. Fine, five and ten. Five and ten is coming. You now go there and then have a look at the lot number. Fine, can you see lot number is one not one actually? So one not one is the first one. One not two is the second one now. Fine. If you go there and see it's not one. One not one is now having what? Oh God. One not one is <laughs> five quantities. I don't know why it has taken one not one as five quantities now. Rather, are one not two. It has allocated one not two only. Because that is expiring first, and so 102 is allocated for 10 quantities. Fine. 102 is like, uh, 102 is the bottom one. Fine. It is now allocated 102 for 10 quantities. Now 10 quantities is now allocated actually. It is allocated it. 102 is allocated. That is the first expiry first one is allocated. The balance five quantities it is not taken from 102 or not. Yes, it's correct, sir. Huh? First expiry is taken 10 quantities. Yeah, that is expiring uh, first, so there is allocated first now. Fine. For uh, lot two. We have only zero. 10, and then the remaining is allocated from the other one. Uh, lot one. Other lot is now expiring on 31st of July, so it is not taken. So it is not perfectly done. So allocation is not. Fine, click on it. We will not do the ship confirmation. Fine, click on it. We will not perform a ship confirmation actually. So click on the shipment number and then we will not perform a ship confirmation actually. Fine, click on the mm -hmm. confirmation. So it is now going to go to this. Number. So it is not done. So now what happens? It will be going towards the ship actually. Fine, click on the now. Fine, go there. So now it is now shipped. Now we go to the transfer orders and then do it now. Fine. Hello, I am in a training actually. Fine. I will now call you after uh, uh, around 15 minutes. Okay. I will call.
So go there. So it will not ship. And then you go to the transfer orders now and go to the manage transfer orders. And then you can also the ship will be coming. Fine. Click on done and then come back here. No? Fine. Click on that. So click on the view ship once the whatever there is no ship. So you go there. The expected receipt date has to come. If it doesn't come, sometimes what happens, it will not come. So what you have to do is you go there in this place. You will now go there and then run the send ship fund advice. If it is not coming, if the expected receipt date is not coming in this place, what you do is you go there. I will now go to what monitor process. And then we will now run the concurrent fine. Click on the scheduling. I will now run the send ship fund advice. If it doesn't come, fine. Send to percentage fine. Shipment advice. So this is the concurrent now. So the ESS job fine go there. And then we will now run it for a specific one now. Fine from shipment. Fine go there. Come on. If you go there, come on. Fine ship process. Uh, manage transfer orders there. Fine go there. So the shipment number is what? 99195. Fine. It's also closed. Fine. 99195 is the one. So go there. Go to the model process. And then I'll now say 99195. 99195 is the one. Fine. Give it a tap. So for this, what happens if we had to ready? Take copy and do it. And then what happens you go there? It's both. So sometimes whatever, even if you run it, the SSA may not work properly. I will not give a cancer mark. If that doesn't work properly, then what you do is you go there. You will not go to the manage shipment. There is a master concurrent you can run off. Right? So manage right? shipment interface. The master concurrent you run it. And then go there. To home. If SSA does not give you the desired results, the desired result is what? In the transfer order, you have to get the expected receipt date and the destination order. The date has to come. Right? So we are given five days as the transit time. And so 26 plus five, whatever the most the second of August will be reaching. So you run this, fine. Mode is what all. And then you need not have to give you the shipment number, fine. Give the ship from org is what T03. Give a minimal parameter number. Fine. We give a minimal parameter number. And then this will now invoke SSA now. Fine. If SSA do not give the desired result, you run the managed shipment interface, it will now invoke the SSA internally, and then it will now definitely interface it to the destination. So only when the date comes, that means what the transfer order is now uh, interface to destination org. This date is now is saying is that if that is not coming, then either SSA or managed shipment interface. Got sir, it? One minute, sir. Sir, this express date showing uh, 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 can go to the screen, sir. Transfer order, yeah. Uh, initial ship date plus expiry date. They, uh, no, no, not expiry date. It is the initial ship rate plus the transit times. Transit time oh. of five days we are given. Uh, where, sir? In, in uh, we are given the transit time in this place. I will not go there. Click on it. I will not show you the transit times. Now, click on setup and maintenance. We are given the transit times in other place actually. So manage carriers. Manage transit. Carriers and transit times I are given. Okay, okay. Fine. Click on it. So that it is taken care of. So okay. you may have multiple ways of transiting it. Fine. So one of them is a default method. The system will not take up only the default method. I will not close it. So just show it one time. Manage transit times. One second. Not coming actually. It is now slow actually. The system has become slow actually. Oh God. The system has become slow actually. <laughs> we can't help it. Now, having done this now, I let it come and go there. I will now right click and then duplicate now. Right click and then duplicate. Oh, the system is slow now. So it's not coming, working properly actually. So we had to go to the destination org and then receive it actually. So once when you receive and deliver, when you receive and put away, then the whole activity is now completed actually. System is slow. But the site cannot be reached all. <laughs> so it's also not working actually. So yeah, this yeah. is in total. Thank you. So I'm unable to reach even the site is down actually. So go there. Okay. So once when the expected result date is coming, in the managed transit times, we are given five days time. So because of which, what happens, the initial ship trip, the five days, what happens, they're not showing you. Second of August is the expected date. So only when you have the expected date, then we have to again go to the destination org, and then we cannot very well do it. Site is down. Ah, now it's coming. It was initially down. I will not go there. Click on it. I will not go to the setup and maintenance, and then show you the managed transit times. I'll leave now. I will not go there, and then show you that. Fine, click on it. So click on search and find go to the manage transit types. Find manage personally find transit find personally find time personally. So manage transit time is the one. Find that. So manage transit time is the one. I will now query for this now. from what I'm the type is what internal location of find the origin is what T01, T03, and then lock one now. Find lock one to lock two. And then click on search. If you search for it, what about it? Now show you already a transit time has been defined actually. Fine. We have defined from what happens the T0 lock one to lock two. 
and the orders and then you can in the bottom whatever they are given the transit time is five days actually five days the transit time. and then this is one of the default method so you may have multiple methods of uh, transiting it actually we have multiple methods of transiting it by air or by rail or by sea and make one of them as a default method the default method only will be applied in the transfer order okay sir got it now we'll not go to the destination org and then receive it now thank you we'll not give a cancel no point we're given it so let us now go to the destination org and then receive it now click on it i will not go to the inventory overview <clears throat> and then we are going to receive it now right click on it we will not go to the reserves right click on it we're going to make a receipt I have not got the results. You're not going to make a gate entry fine. Click on the receive expected shipments. Now, this must be T032 now. Fine. Click on change or. So, this is the destination or. You go there. Fine. The T032 is the one. Fine. Give it a tap. And then click on OK. Now. You're not changing the order to T032. So, click on it. And then we'll now click on the receive expected shipments. And then here we are going to query on the transfer order number. The transfer order number is what? Uh, it's what? 1530. 1530. So go there. You go there and then put 153 and then give a tap. It will be coming automatically because it is already reached over here. Click on search and you're going to receive it. Click on search. And then select both lines with the, with the control and then click on receive. Both lines, 5 and 10 quantities. So click on the show receipt quantity. It will not show you the individual quantities. So click on the create result. So the GRN number is now getting created. Click on result. And then fill up the packing slip number. And go there. And then shipping method, if it is available, no, see whether anything is available. Nothing is available. So the three units are there. And then what is the variable number? <clears throat> Fine. You, this is all for value addition, actually. Value addition, you can put it and then whatever they click on submit by which whatever the GRN number gets created for the top of the 15 quantities. Fine. The 2005 is the GRN number. Okay. That will be getting updated on the transfer orders. In this place, whatever there's no receive. Now, click on done and then come back. Now, Fine. click on done and then come back again. Now, Fine. click on the ship and You cannot see the 15 is not there. It is not a delivered. You will not go there and then deliver it. Now, Fine. click on it. So, <laughs> 2005 is the GRN number. Fine. Go that one. I will not come out and then click on the put away now. Fine, we are going to perform a put away now. Fine, click on it. We will not perform a put away. So the put away results, I'm going to find click on the put away. I'm going to put away. Fine, 2005, I'm going to put away now. Result number is what? 2005. 2005. And then click on search now. Fine, the GR number is going to be put away. Thank you. I will not select both the lines now. Fine, with the, with the control. And then click on a put away. And then now, uh, the while you are creating the, uh, the internal requisition, we are now given SFSI, but now the inventory in charge feels that there is not sufficient space. Now, fine, you will not override it also. You can very well override it to what FGS or something like that. On both the lines also, you can override. And then submit it. It gets put away. Fine, click on the now, fine. Depending on the actual one, fine, you must enter a valid lot. Now, you know, it's not saying the lot number has to be entered while put away, fine. Select the line. And then whatever they go to the actions and then go to record lot and serial numbers. Thank you. Not record lot serial number. But the 10 quantity is lot one not one actually. And record lot serial numbers. Thank you. So click on the select transfer order lots. It will automatically select. And select it. It is not getting selected. And lots. And click on OK. Fine. Fine. So 10 quantities of lot one not two and then five quantities of lot one not one. Click on OK. It is automatically selected. Thank you. And then whatever they click on OK. OK. And then similarly for the second line also it is select. And go that to it. And then go to actions and then go to sell record lot and serial numbers. And go there. So click on the whatever the whatever the what is the one five quantities already is now. I have to keep my customer on the 10 quantities actually. So keep my customer on the 10 quantities. So keep my customer on the 10 quantities now. Right? Select it and then click on whatever the actions and then go to record lot serial numbers for the 10 quantities. And then click on the select transfer lots. It will automatically show you the one or two lot now. And right? select it and then click on apply. We had applied now. Right? Click on apply and then click on OK. It is applied and that. So go there, click on OK. So the lot is applied actually. So we have to allocate the what happens, the appropriate serial control, lot control, mission control, all these things we have to put now. Locate the also. Done it. And then afterwards, you click on submit, it gets put away. So upon put away, the whole process of IRTO gets completed. Now. The put away transaction is completed. Fine, go that moment. And then if you go to the manager transfer orders, you know, see it's also delivered now. Fine, click on done, and then come back again, it will be delivered actually. Use shipments and receipts, whatever they can now see, it's also delivered. So the IRTO route of transfer order is now complete with approvals actually. Okay. Any doubts? Uh, no, sir. Sir, yesterday we we are running uh, costing uh, inventory. Yeah, costing is not required. Fine. Costing is not required. Costing okay. for IRD, but in in reality, you will all be costing it. Fine. Everything will be costed in a real scenario. You will all be costing each and everything. Even though we are given a risk price of ten, what happens? It now going as a as a price is zero on the requisition. Internal requisitions will have a price of zero. Even though the list price is ten, because for movement of material, there is no cost involved at all. Between our walls. Okay. Okay. So this is the fourth method of doing the transfers. Now, fine. There is a, a transfer orders with approval that is known as IRT watch. Okay, sir. Any other doubt? I'll be uploading it also. 
So bye for now, and then we will not meet on some other thing. This is on IRTV. I will not upload this record also. Okay, okay sir. Thank bye. you. Bye. Sripati, bye. Bye bye, Sripati. So click on end meeting now.